Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Friday. We made it. The weekend's almost here. Rochelle and I are thrilled to welcome our friends Teddy and Tom from Locally. Locally.com, they have been a partner of the MBDA for several years now, supporting retailers at large, helping retailers uh, work with brands uh, in their websites like Shimano, Trek, Saris, Electra, hundreds of brands helping shoppers find and buy products that are in stock at your store. And there's lots of ways you as the retailer can benefit. Such an interesting, important topic that we wanted to invite Tom and Teddy here to walk through how you can work with locally. Um, several of our retailers, several of our P2 group members are working with locally and the reviews are fantastic. So pay attention, take notes, ask questions. And I think with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Teddy and Tom. Thank you, Heather. It's, I'll, uh, I'll jump in here for a couple of minutes and then uh, pass the mic over to Tom to show everybody uh, what it is that Locally does. But for starters, um, Heather, I wanna say thank you very much for the partnership with NBDA. We love doing anything we can to support uh, IBDs and specialty retail. So um, it's it's really great to be a part of it all. And you guys have been, you know, wonderful partners for us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so for those of you at, uh, that are in the audience here today, and, and for those of you who are going to be watching on recording, so Teddy Shavoni, I head up his dev here at, at Locally, uh, former retailer myself, I get it. Um, I've worked those 16 hour days and unpacked those trucks late at night, you know, when, when you can finally get around to it. Um, so one of the things that, uh, that I want to bring up with you here uh, is a special uh, partnership that we're structuring together with NBDA. Um, it's based around one of our uh, sales opportunities that we call Ship to Store, um, effectively, effectively being a, a drop shipping program where uh, we have a number of uh, brands who would like to uh, partner up with specialty retailers uh, where perhaps they have a, a product that needs to be assembled or maybe it's something that needs to be fit, uh, but high touch items. And uh, rather than uh, selling those products direct to consumer themselves, uh, they'd love to establish uh, relationships with specialty retailers like yourselves, um, where they could drop ship the product to your store and have you assemble it. And effectively uh, making you an authorized dealer without you having to make an inventory commitment on the front side. Um, and in those cases, uh, basically the brands are looking to send you uh, a product, uh, a check for doing the work, a uh, percentage of the sale and a shopper. Um, and as we all know from every report and every study on the planet, you know, 60 to 90% of people report that they spend more money when they go into a store. So it can only really benefit you. So. If anyone's interested in joining Ship the Store or learning more about that, uh, feel free to reach out to Tom Whelan and, and get more information. And Heather, uh, thank you for the opportunity to help put that together. And I'm sure we'll be doing more with it. So excited to offer that to retailers. Thank you, Teddy. Gladly, gladly. So take it away, Tom. I'm muted. Thanks, Teddy. Um, well, yeah, so hey, so uh, thanks again for having us here, Heather. Um, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Tom Whalen. I'm the Senior Retail Activation Manager um, here at Locally. I'm based out of New Orleans. I've been with Locally um, about five years or so. Um, and uh, I manage, you know, all things retailer related over here. So, you know, webinars like this kind of fall under that. So um, a little bit of a little bit of background on Locally for anybody who's not familiar. Um, we're roughly eight years old. Um, we are, a, you know, uh, startup that you know started in the outdoor industry. Uh, we were founded by a group of retailers, really to address a shift in uh, you know shopper behavior, which I'm sure um, everybody who's watching this or who's in the uh, audience you know has witnessed, which is that shoppers are going online before going into stores. You know, uh, I think it was Business Insider or something like that reported that 90 90 percent of shoppers start their product discovery part of shopping online, um, and then something like 46% of, of shoppers won't even go into a store unless they can confirm inventory availability. I've actually got stats here um, uh, that I can show you guys. And then like Teddy was saying, um, most of those shoppers are, are making additional purchases when they arrive into that store. Um, and this is an experience that uh, customers are getting used to. You know, in, in 2019, I think, if you looked at the top 500 retail businesses in the US, it was uh, 6.9 or 7%. 
of those businesses offered buy online, you know, pick up in store capabilities. And in 2020, uh, it was over 45%, I think, started offering that. And I think you can largely attribute that to COVID. But the fact of the matter is that that's, that's stuck around since then. And it's become uh, an experience that shoppers have kind of come to expect um, and uh, and are growing more and more familiar with. Um, and and they, they want it uh, for a number of reasons. You know, shoppers they, they like online to offline shopping because it's convenient. Um, you know, you get that same day gratification. Returns are easier. Um, it's safe. We see that most buy online pickup and store orders are for higher priced items. So not having a, a bike, you know, or a $500 cooler or something sitting on your porch while you're at work um, is something that's attractive to read to, uh, to shoppers, you know, um, and it just saves time, you know, uh, fewer wasted trips, you're not waiting for things to get delivered, that kind of stuff. And then on the retail side of things too, um, it's profitable. You know, you can avoid, um, just like shoppers avoid shipping fees, you know, as a retailer, you can avoid that last mile uh, fulfillment cost. Those, the, uh, the freight costs, um, often you get a higher margin, you know, and you're able to leverage your in-store inventory, um, you know, to avoid markdowns um, and stuff like that. So that's enough numbers. Um, I think you guys get the idea. I want to show you kind of what, what these tools look like on brand websites. There's two main tools that we uh, power on, um, you know, three or 400 brand websites, you know, the brands that we're partnered with. Today, I want to show you Yakima's website and then also um, Trek Bikes website. So um, this first tool is the store locator. Um, if I'm on Yakima's website, I would just go up to support and then shop local, click on this dealer, dealer locator button here. It's different for different brands. Sometimes the map looks a little different, but the idea is the same, right? So this is Locally's map that we're, that we're seeing here on yakima.com. Um, as a Yakima dealer, you know, if I sign up for Locally, um, I'm able to control all of the information that shows up on this store locator. And that's the case for any store locator that we power. So think of it kind of as this like, hub and spoke solution where from your locally account, any information you change, whether that's your social media links, your store hours, um, if you update, you know, location information or a logo, that kind of stuff, even address, phone number, um, all of that information is disseminated out to all of our brand partner sites. So that's what I mean when I say um, hub and spoke. And um, the way that these stores are biased um, is primarily on distance, right? but then also on who's got their stock connected to locally. Um, for, the, for those of you that aren't familiar, this is a free service provided by your brand partners. Um, if I'm a shopper, I can click on Brown stock and actually see this kind of digital representation of what Yakima products are available at this retail, at this re, uh, retail location, right? Um, if there were different size or color options, those would appear here. Um, and then you can also see that we've got some uh, buy now, pick up at store, reserve online, pay at store options. I'll get into the, how these work in, in just a little bit, but um, at a high level, all of this data, all this information is managed between locally and the brand. And all we need from you as a retailer is a list of your UPCs and quantities. We match those UPCs uh, to the catalog content. So you don't have to manage images or descriptions or prices or any, any of that kind of stuff. Um, so it's really low lift in that, in that sense. Um, and again, you know, I'll dig into how that feed works more in a bit, but circling back, um, I did mention that sharing inventory does bias your store higher um, in the results, you know, versus just uh, being a, uh, a local listing like this retailer here doesn't have their inventory connected. So they might appear below another dealer that does. Some brands have their own category tags. We can see there's like, you know, a four star, five star rack installation. These can affect biasing as well, uh, but all locally does is proximity to the shopper um, and then uh, whether or not you're sharing inventory. Now we have seen that retailers who share inventory are 77% more likely to be clicked on by a shopper. I think that's probably, there's probably two things going on there. One, we're, we're biasing the dealer higher um, and two, shoppers want to see available inventory, you know, to bring up that um, number again, 46% of shoppers won't go into a store unless they confirm the items available. So I think those two things are in play when we look at that 77% number. Um, another cool feature for shoppers on, again, on the store locator is that you can 
I actually just browse these product pages um, individually and see which retailers near you might have this specific item in stock. And then you can kind of reverse search uh, this way, right? Starting from a product and then finding a dealer. Um, similar concept uh, to how the map operates organically. Um, the next tool I wanna to show you is the product locator. And this is really where most of the conversions are gonna be happening um, as, a, you know, as, a, as a shopper. I know the product I want rather than just looking for, hey, who's a Yakima dealer near me? I'm looking for a specific bike. You know, I'm looking for this Roscoe six, excuse me, uh, in this color, in this size, and uh, and I want to buy it now. And this is an interesting call out because this product's actually not available online right now. Um, and again, we're on trekbikes.com here, so this is the brand website. It's not available to order online, but I've got a few dealers near me in Boise, Idaho, who do have this item in stock. Um, as a shopper, you know, if I click this button, locally, modal comes up but we're not leaving the brand site. I can pick through their, their different size and color options here. Um, and then I can check out for in-store pickup. So this isn't shipping or anything like that. This is all local, you know, local referrals to get, you know, feed into your store. Um, and if I'm a shopper and I hit buy now, pick up at store, what's gonna happen is I have to remove, I was doing some shopping with, with Troy Lee earlier. Um, the first thing you'll see is you the shopper has an option to message the store. So there's a direct messaging feature um, between the store and the shopper. Um, and if I go to checkout, this is a purchase order, right? So what's going to happen is it's going to pull up my billing information, and then I can enter in. Um, let's see. I just do a fake phone number here. I don't know if it'll let me do that. Um, well, then you put in your credit card and you check out, oh yeah, it's got to have a valid phone number. And what's going to happen is the store is going to get um, a text and an email with that order information. And I'll actually show you guys what that looks like here. Oh, you know what? I'm signed in as a retailer. So if I'm a retailer and I get an order, I'm going to get a link to that order. Um, it depends on the point of sale system you have too. We've got a few integrations like with Ascend. I know there's one coming with Salarant and Rain soon as well, where these orders will actually feed into your POS. Um, but the way that our standard system works is that you get texted and emailed this link and anybody with this link can resolve that order. So you could have, you know, a, uh, GM receiving these orders. You could have somebody in an office. You could have people on the floor. Um, it's different for each retailer. You know, you can find a solution that works for you, but you'll get this URL and then you'll have an option to resolve this order request. So when I open up this panel here, it's gonna load for me. Been having some internet issues today. There we go. Um, I can one, just reply to the shopper. I could send a message. If I know that I've got this product in stock, I can send confirmation. That's when the shopper is going to be billed and they're going to get alerted that you've got the item, you know, ready for them to come pick up. So I do want to touch on that point because I think it's important. When shoppers place orders for in-store pickup through locally, they are waiting for confirmation from you, the retailer, before going into the store. And we do give a four-hour window um, for you guys to reply to those orders. Like Teddy said, you know, we know stores are busy. You know, you've got a hundred things going on. So we think a four hour window, um, you know, with the shopper ready to check out is, is reasonable. And we do send you reminders every 30 minutes too, to remind you, you know, somebody wants to buy something from you. Um, so you confirm, you know, and, and if you don't get back to them in four hours, we do auto cancel the order to avoid a, you know, a bad shopper experience. But when you do confirm that order within four hours, the shopper gets alerted. They're like, okay, hey, you've been billed now. You can go into the store and pick the item up. Um, and y'all will have it ready for them when they when they get back there. In the event there's an inventory discrepancy, you know, for whatever reason, um, you can cancel an order to, although, you know, we encourage you to send a message and say, hey, actually, we've got it in a different color or size or um, something like that to keep the sale going. But you do have the option to cancel the order as well. Um, and the process is really the same for, oops, what I clicked there, I clicked directions. 
It's really the same for the reserve online pay and store feature. Um, the only difference here is that um, you're not paying, the shopper's not paying for it before they go into the store. So here it's just a hold on the, on the product um, and then they pay for it when they get there, All right? Now, uh, both of these transaction types do have a 3.5% service fee, but sharing inventory, like we were reviewing uh, back here, I'll show you an example of a retailer that's doing that. Um, this service is totally free for all retailers on locally. You know, this is supported by your brand partners. So if you just want the call to action to be a phone number, um, you can do that at no cost. You can link your point of sale to locally and show inventory on brand sites for free. All right. So those are the two tools. Um, I think next I'm going to jump into what's involved in, um, in signing up a little bit. So at a high level, these are the tools I just ran through. Um, there's really three steps. Um, if you're starting at step one, that would be claim your account. Uh, so we should have all of, all of your listings in locally already. When we partner with brands, they send us their dealer list. So we've got hundreds of thousands of retail listings in locally's CRM. So uh, claiming your account is the first step. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like in a second, but it's it's simple. It's like claiming a, a Google My Business page, or I think they're calling it something different now. I'm not can't follow all the acronyms. But um, the second one is connecting your inventory. So like I said at the beginning of the call, if you remember, if you'll remember, all we need is UPC and quantity on hand. We do need that UPC because that's how we match it to the brand's catalog. So if you don't use brand UPCs yet, that's okay. I've personally helped, you know, hundreds of retailers switch over and uh, I know they've never looked back at, at making the change. Um, sometimes it's just starting with a few of your most important brands and then scanning them in over time. Um, but yeah, connecting your inventory, we've got integrations with 40 or so point of sale systems um, that make it really easy. And if if you don't see yours on the list, which I'll show you in a bit, uh, let us know. You know, we add more all the time. We want to integrate with as many systems as possible. Um, so let us know if you don't see yours, and and we're happy to work with your uh, point of sale company to to set up an integration. Um, and then the last step would be collecting sales. As I mentioned, there's that 3.5 percent fee here, um, and we've got you know reserve online, pay in store, buy online, pick up in store. Um, and then, of course, there's that ship to store option that Teddy was talking about, where we can send you, um, you know, a bike, a shopper, and a and a check. Um, so let's take a, a bit of a deeper look into let's see into into these steps. So um, step one, claim your account. I pointed this out. Let's show you guys uh, what this looks like here. So if I'm a if I'm a, a retailer. Um, I might go here to sign up um, and I would select retailer and then I would type in, you know, my company name and select it from the drop down, right? Um, load in your email address, pick a username, password, all that kind of stuff, hit create my account. What's going to happen next is you'll get an email address to confirm your login and then you'll have access to uh, your locally dashboard. Um, now, let me see. I'm going to try to log in as a retailer here. If you give me one second. So I can show you what the, the dashboard will look like when you sign in. We do. Um, so let's see, I'm moving things around here. So that was step one, claim your account. Step two, manage and enhance your listings. And all of these links, we'll get this information out to you guys if you don't have it. These are really helpful, very step-by-step -step walkthroughs. So if you get stuck at any, at any place, definitely refer to these links. For the purpose of the demo, I'd rather just show you what it looks like in the dashboard. But um, step two is where you can update all that listing information that I showed you on the brand store locators. So um, this is where I'd upload that logo. You can have a, a bio. You can add industries that you're involved in with uh, that you're in here, um, and then company level social media links, all that good stuff. You can add in here. Location specific information would be under the locations tab. This is where you can, you know, 
manage your your uh, your address, your store hours, and then location specific information. I know some retailers have you know different Facebook pages for different stores um, that can all be set here. Um, you can also promote events on brand sites. Now I don't have an example pulled up, but this is a really it's a really easy event creator where you can add an image and body of text, and it would appear below this in stock button here on the store locator. So anybody in your area, you know, if you're running a, a promotion or you've got, you know, a 5K or something you're doing, I don't know, you know, barbecue, some promotion, you can you can post an event um, here uh, on the store locator for, for people to see. So I think that's a cool tool as well. Um, and that's just a link to the FAQ page there. Um, one important tool I do want to highlight as well is what we call the relationship manager. So, um, I'm sure as retailers, you've gone and you know, checked out a brand's website who you probably carried for a decade and lo and behold, you're not on their store locator. That happens all the time. I mean, dealer lists aren't perfect. And um, we built this tool to try and help uh, um, make that relationship managing, for lack of a better term, uh, a little bit easier on you guys. So if I'm not showing from Yeti's store locator or you know, for a better example, we could do Shimano cycling, um, I can request to be added here from within this tool. And this request is going to go directly to the brand. They're going to review it and approve you to start appearing on the store locator. This is also necessary, these authorizations, if you want to show inventory for those brands too. So I recommend everybody go in. If you've got multiple stores, you can flip through those here. But go into this manager and make sure you're showing up for, um, for the right brands. If we're not partnered with the brand, they won't show up in this tool. You know, we can only influence store locators that you know we power uh so if a brand's not showing up we probably don't work with them but we'd love to so let us know cool so that's step two step three is your inventory feed um and this is you know everything up to this step that we've gone through again totally free for you guys to do so syncing your inventory um i'm going to show you this list here so these are our, what we call premier connections. These are all automated inventory feeds. It's a set it and forget it type of thing where all these systems we know at least have the capability of sending us your UPCs and your quantities at least once a day. Sometimes they're real time, um, but sending it over to, to us at least once a day and you not having to worry about it ever again. It just runs in the background um, and we're able to push that updated inventory out to brand sites. There are some systems that at this moment appear to only be uh, manual uploads. And even though it's not appealing, we do have you know, a few hundred retailers who just drag and drop a file into a Dropbox folder a few times a week. And they find that that's worth the payout that they get from um, you know, being able to be listed on hundreds of, of brand sites. So um, way less common, only a few percent of dealers encounter that. I think most of most of uh, whoever's watching this is gonna be on a uh, one of these systems here, but um, again, I mean, this is just the report. This is, it's just two columns of data that we need from you all. And we do audit these feeds too. So in the event that um, we don't see an update for 72 hours or so, we'll, we'll actually send you an email, let you know, hey, we haven't seen inventory update in a while. Can you make sure everything's running smooth? And if another day goes by, we'll remove your inventory from brand sites. And that's just so that shoppers don't have a bad experience, you know, like, seeing something's available in store and um, uh, driving there across town and it's not in stock, right? Uh, that's not a great experience. So um, so yeah, that's the inventory feed. The next thing is buy it locally. Um, and I will go to the dashboard here to show you. So um, Payments only, reservations only. There's two transaction types. You can pick either or or both. It's up to you. There's no commitment period for, for this program. You can switch it off at any time by emailing our support team, um, which you can see here. Um, so, and and you don't and you, you know, you don't pay this uh the 3.5% fee unless it's a successful order. So if there's a return or a no-show, we don't bill you for that. So it's essentially uh, risk-free to just switch this on for a weekend or a weekday and just give it a shot. But first you let us know which transaction type you want to, you want to try out. The next thing you do is let us know who you want us to send these order alerts to, right? You can have as many staff members as you want. 
receiving these orders, they can receive all notifications, they can receive just, just some. Um, Teddy's dropping off. Thanks for joining, Teddy. Appreciate it. Um, and then you would set this up for each store, right? The next thing you do is punch in a credit card. This is where we bill that 3.5% fee. This fee is billed monthly. So at the end of the month, we've tallied up all of your, your transaction fees. You do have 30 days to review these orders and let us know if somebody picked it up or, or uh, returned it or something like that. Um, but this is where we would bill those 3.5% those uh, fees to. For sales tax, we actually work with a company called Avalara. So we collect and remit sales tax on behalf of you. We'll also send you um, a statement, I guess, for lack of a better term, at the end of the month for um, all the sales tax that we've remitted on your behalf you know, to your municipality. So um, that's the sales tax. And then the last step is Stripe. So um, this is how you get paid. If you opt into the buy online, pick up and store option, uh, you get paid through Stripe. If you're not familiar, it's a lot like PayPal, um, but you basically are setting up a direct deposit here. Stripe does have a credit card processing fee, um, which is 2.9%. I'm not sure how much that would differ from whatever your, your processing fee is in store, but that's Stripe's fee. That's taken out at the time of purchase too. Um, and they hold on to it, whether the item's returned or not. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, and then launch, you know, when you're ready to go, just hit this, this link here. Somebody from our support team is going to test uh, the order process with you, make sure you're receiving alerts, all that good stuff, and you'll be live and you'll start receiving orders from brand sites right away. Um, yeah. And then after that, there's a few other things you can do too. So we can, um, we can integrate your inventory into Google, you know, so Google Shopping, um, you know, Google Maps, your Google My Business profile, all that stuff. We can we can integrate that into Google. If you're doing buy it locally, it's actually free for you. So I encourage you to check that out. If you have a Shopify site, we can integrate um, product content with your Shopify website um, and help you run local inventory ads, all that kind of stuff. Um, for the purpose of this demo, I think we're going to keep it just to buy locally and the brand websites that we can list your inventory on and everything like that. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff that you can do um, with locally when you're signed up. So um, I think that's everything. I think I've been talking a whole bunch and I think I'll stop talking now and uh, let Heather or uh, Rochelle jump in and um, maybe we got some questions. Maybe we didn't, we'll see. Um, I do see one question. How often do you bring on new brands? Yeah, all the time. We're adding new brands weekly. Uh, you know, and, and if you have any brands in mind that you'd like to see on locally that aren't, you know, we would love to chat with them. That's how a lot of these relationships, uh, you know, that we form with retailers and brands are kind of symbiotic in that sense that, you know, either a retailer introduced us to the brand or the brand introduced us to a new retailer. Um, so if you have any, you know, any you'd like to refer, please do. Perfect. Um, what if a product comes and needs to be returned? How easy is that process? Am I stuck with that product? So if that's in reference to ship to store, um, if a shopper returns a product, you would have, you'd essentially buy, you know, buy, buy the brand out of that product. So you'd have that item on the floor. Um, but again, I think, I mean, whether you're issuing store credit or the shoppers buying something else in replace of that item, you know, it's usually a net even, but um, it's rare that we see somebody return a ship to store order. But in the event they did, you it would be yours to uh, to sell. Yeah. Um, can locally be used as an alternative to a dedicated e-com site? Yes. Yeah. So um, we have we have a free tool that lets you embed your locally supported inventory. It's just like a iframe onto your website. Um, and I know we're actually working on a product right now that um, would actually just set up a website for you um, and have you know inventory integrated and all that stuff. But um, the short answer is yeah. So we have retailers that don't do e-commerce that use locally as kind of like a local e-com solution in that it supports buy online, pick up and store and reserve. 
but uh, not shipping or anything like that. So um, yes, we did. Perfect. Looks like we have one more. Um, when I sign up, will I have a direct contact at Locally? Uh, and then can I change products I'm working with at any time or stop the service at any time? Yeah, so, well, so most folks um, email support at locally.com. We've got a great team over there and it'll probably be the same person that's been helping you. They tend to stick onto those threads, you know? Um, and then as far as um, stopping at any time, absolutely, you can shoot us an email. We'll, we'll you know, drop your feed or turn off the buy it locally service if you want. Um, as far as excluding products, which I think was one of the questions too, anything that you send us in your inventory feed, we're gonna try to display for you. So if you wanna keep any items out of your inventory feed, just don't send us those UPCs and, and we won't list them. Okay. So. All right, perfect. Um, if anyone watching the recording has any questions, where can they send those questions? They, you can send those to me. So it's just tom.whelan at locally.com. Um, and I'd be happy to help you or forward you to somebody who knows the answer better than I do. Perfect. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. This has been super informative. I loved having the, you know, the screen share and seeing it firsthand. So really appreciate you. Rochelle, thanks for moderating the questions. And retailers, thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. Awesome. Thanks so much, Heather. Appreciate you guys having me on.